Thank you for joining us on NTA News Nationwide. I'm Naja Atitijani. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has announced 239 new cases of COVID-19 in the country as at 9th May 2020. This increases the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 to 4,151. Of the 239 new cases, 97 are in Lagos, 44 in Bauchi, 29 in Kano, 19 in Kazuna, 17 in Borno, 7 in the FCT, 6 Six in Kwara, five in Oyo, and three each in Kaduna and Sokoto states. Others are Adamawa, Kebbi, Plateau, and Ogo states, which have two each, while Ekiti state has one new case. So far, 745 patients have been discharged and 128 deaths rather have been recorded. Now, the government of Bochi State has refuted claims that people in Azare, Katagum local government area, are dying of the coronavirus, coronavirus complications. The chairman Bochi State Task Force on COVID-19, Baba Taylor, refuted claims while briefing newsmen on issues emanating from Azare. Mahmoud Ibn Muhammad reports that a journalist in Bochi has also tested positive for COVID-19. Yes, this death is, is kind of a seasonal switching of people in that area. This death also that took place in Kano, the rest of the which have been handled, also part of it spilled into Azar. But I tell you, and I'm very sure, the number of death is nowhere near what people are saying. With an average of five to six deaths daily, the chairman denied claims that over 300 people have died from COVID-19 complications in Azari. A lot of people from Azari transact businesses through Jigawa to Kano, and we started to have a rising number of cases. Somehow, the medical personnel, I wouldn't say forget, but were not following the normal protocol that was taught them was or told to them on how to deal with COVID-19 patients. 1,103 samples were taken so far and we have received 1,069 samples as at this morning. With an increase of over 100 patients within two weeks across the state, some patients are expected to be discharged by next week. In Bauchi, Mahmoud Ibn Muhammad, NTA News. Meanwhile, 160 Nigerian returnees from New York have landed in Abuja. The evacuees had indicated willingness to return home. Consequently, the federal government, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, commissioned Nigerian missions to plan for the successful return of those Nigerians, particularly those stranded because of shutdown in air travels as a result of COVID-19. Usman Aliu reports. This is the arrival of the Ethiopian airline that conveyed the returnees comprising 92 males, 60 females and 8 infants. At this moment of the global pandemic, the usually frenetic aviation protocols have changed. Baggage claims are done rightly at the tarmac. The passengers do not have to be in the airport arrivals as it has been. And from airport, the returnees are taken away for isolation to ascertain their health status with regard to COVID-19. Immigration, customs and port health officials are on ground, but no close contact is tolerated. All these safety standards are put in place to avoid further importation of the virus.
New York is the epicenter of coronavirus in the United States of America, and the U.S. is worst hit by COVID-19 in the world, with more than 1.4 million cases so far. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTA News. And in Benway State, the COVID-19 Action Committee has intercepted an alleged has intercepted the corpse of an alleged patient of COVID-19 transported from Kanu to be buried in the state. Governor Samuel Otom, who confirmed the incident, described the situation as unfortunate. Charles Abba reports. The state COVID-19 Action Committee has continued to respond to emergencies anytime it gets alerts of suspected cases of the pandemic from members of the public. One of the latest tips for which the committee quickly rose to the occasion was the interception of an alleged corpse of a COVID-19 victim who was conveyed from Kano to be buried in Konshisha. Governor Samuel Otom, who commended the committee for the interception, vowed not to take chances in any guise to spread the disease in the state. They were apprehended. We couldn't allow them to take her to Konshisha. We wanted to bury in a, a lady but the people there too insisted that no, we don't want a coronavirus uh, barrier in our place. So we resorted to bring the person to the headquarters. The, the larger community safety is far more than insisting that you take a corpse. What are you going to do with a dead corpse? What are you going to do with it? So I've taken responsibility that they should bury the corpse in my country here. Uh, if they want anything, they should confront me, and I'm ready to take all the consequences. Two corpses of COVID-19 victims were reportedly wheeled into Benway State for burial. Now I have on phone from Benway State the, uh, to explain more on the interception of the course from Kano, the Commissioner for Information, Culture and Tourism, Benway State, Gunan Adingi. You're welcome to our program. Good evening, Ma. Now, I want to know what eventually happened after the interception. Okay, well, when we intercepted the cops, what we decided to do, because it's standard practice, is that every cops that come into Benway State, regardless whether it's COVID-19 or it's not, we would have the pathologist buried. Because um, where the cops, particularly where it was coming from, was Kano, which is a high bordered state already for COVID-19. Now, we don't know if person who was corona positive or not, but we just decided that every corpse would be buried. So why they intersected it, they brought it back to Makodi and the pathologist buried it. So are you saying... And the people who took the corpse, yeah. Yes, go ahead. And the people who followed the corpse, the five of them, they are quarantined right now in the isolation center in Boko because they're from Boko. Now, uh, does that mean that the deceased was an indigent of uh, the state who lived in Kano oh, yes. or what? Oh, yes. He was an indigent of the state who lived in Kano. And then, unfortunately, he met his death. And so they were bringing him to take him back to his village where they wanted to bury him. And, um, of course, there were issues where the villagers are also refusing that they don't want cops coming in from anywhere. So we also had those incidences where um, the villagers were always fighting that they don't want the cops. So in order not to even strike up another war, you know, in the community, we just decided that any cops that come in, regardless of where it comes from, but I mean that raises the question of what the rationale behind transporting a COVID-19 corpse from Kano to Benway is and what's the implication um, of uh, Governor Tom's decision? Oh well, um, the governor acted in the best interest of the state because as a committee we had analyzed everything that was happening and we realized that first there was Every state was supposed to stay where was supposed to lock up its borders. There was no interstate movement. But for some reason, cops are finding their way around Nigeria. And people were thinking, if my brother dies, it's a tradition. Let me bring him home and bury him. So I would say that the family actually thought, okay, it was cheaper to bring him back. I don't think so. Or maybe they want to see their family's cops or the brother's cops when he died or something. I don't know what their reason was. But really, in this time and condition i don't think anybody should be taking cops back and forth but they carried it so very so briefly yeah very very briefly to to wrap up since this has happened what is the state going to do to ensure it doesn't happen again well we have put up more 
surveillance at the border. Our surveillance team is checking out for any other cops that is about to come in. And we're just telling them that anyone you get just intercepted will get the pathologist and the committee to bury it. Oh. So we ensure that everyone is safe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that explanation. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And that was the Commission Information, Culture and Tourism, Benway State, Gunang Adingi. Now, the leadership of market associations in Abuja has appealed for the extension of market operational days, as well as allowing sales of other sale of other com commodities besides the essential items. The association made the plea when a delegation of chairmen and secretaries of various market associations paid a curtsy call on the FCT Minister Mohammed Bello Shaibu Onoze Akubu reports. The delegation led by the chairman of the committee, who is also the chairman of Wuse Market Traders Association, Rafael Okori, commended the FCT administration in its effort at containing the spread of coronavirus in the territory. He, however, appealed for the extension of market operational days and the reopening of other sections of the market, dealing in other commodities outside the essential items, which is currently in effect. We are here to say that we are solidly behind all the decisions, policies, and programs that the minister has implemented to keep their city residents safe and also well fed kindly out of his magnanimity is out the little bit of the lockdown on the major markets in their city for one more day because now we have only two days for food stops to add an additional day which he did before to say we have Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays. And also other sectors of the market have been shut down for five to six weeks to be reopened. FCT Minister Mohammed Musa Bello thanked the market association for their support in the fight against COVID-19, promising to table their request during the weekly COVID-19 review meetings. What we intend to do is uh, normally every week we sit down as a team, including all the relevant uh, participants within the FCT administration to review the situation on the ground and then make amends here and then because at the end of the day, all the essence of governance is for us to be able to meet the expectations of the citizen. The minister ever solicited the cooperation of the association in mitigating the spread of the virus in FCT. Shuaibu Onoseakubu and Similarly, the president of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria and Archbishop of Benin Metropolitan C, Most Reverend Augustine Akubezi, wants Nigerians, irrespective of religious differences, to unite in prayer in order to procure an end to the COVID-19 disease. He said this while delivering the fifth Sunday of he said this while delivering the homily of the fifth Sunday of Easter at St. John Vianney Catholic Church in Benin City. Ediago reports. The Mass is customarily celebrated without congregational voices and subsequently transmitted on television and social media to allow the Catholic faithful to participate. Most Reverend Augustine Akubezi, who expressed concern over the rising cases of COVID-19 globally, called for all hands to be on deck so as to change the narrative. As May 14th, Higher Committee of Human Fraternities Day of Prayer for an End to COVID-19 approaches, Archbishop Akubeze said the Holy Father desires all Catholics to join believers of other faiths in prayer, which takes place on the feast day of St. Matthias the Apostle. On that day, we are all expected to pray, to fast, and to perform works of charity for an end to the current pandemic. Most Reverend Akubeze described Jesus Christ as the only way, truth, and life whom Christians should profess at all times, but more intensely at this time during which COVID-19 presents a dire challenge to life and livelihood. He emphasized that Christ is capable of giving a life of joy, happiness, and peace to those who trust in him. As we currently experience with the COVID-19 pandemic ravaging our world, but if Christ is with us, we are safe. He also enjoined believers to be mindful of their ways. The theme of the message was, Jesus is the only way, truth, and life. In Benin, 
Ede Agu, NTA News. You're watching NCA Nationwide and um, we'll now join our Lagos studio where Hingino is standing by. It's good to see you, Hingino. It's good to see you too, Najatu. Weekends in Lagos used to be a scene to behold with its array of social activities and gorgeously dressed party goers. This much loved kind of weekend unfortunately now lies in the unforeseen future. No thanks to the coronavirus pandemic currently ravaging the world. In this report, Adiola Komiakere will tell us about the new typical weekend in Lagos. Just a drive round Lagos proves that things are no longer the same. The party goers have gone, with virtually empty streets providing opportunity for free movement. The cinema houses, the National Theatre, Muson Centre and other viewing centres, which usually host thousands of people who used to throng the places for different reasons on weekends, are devoid of any activity. Obviously, there is total compliance with the lockdown directive. Some people who spoke off camera say visiting cinema houses help them overcome boredom as well as interact socially. But with the closure, it has become rather difficult for them to get entertained. However, this respondent has a divergent view. I'm very, very happy about it because I got my phone. We got tablets. We, we got tabloids. We have our computers at home. We have our laptops. We have our Nintendo games. We have our gadgets. So that, that's going to keep, keep us all entertained. The Nigerian entertainment industry, which generates huge revenue for government, is experiencing a decline in sourcing revenue. But there is hope of bouncing back. We will overcome it. We will bounce back. But things will not remain the same. There will be a redefinition of what production is. There will be, uh, I know there's going to be uh, uh, tighter and more stringent measures now. I know. Um, um, uh, honestly, it's going to be a tough one. Very, very tough. While the world prays that researchers and scientists unravel COVID-19 mystery by coming up with permanent cure, many Nigerians are looking inwards to key into the new normal. In Lagos, Adeola Komiakiri, NTA News. Lagos State Governor Baba Jide Sonwolu has threatened to take tougher actions and reimpose total lockdown on the state if flouting of the gradual easing guidelines on COVID-19, which began on Monday 4th of May, continues. The governor said this in a statewide broadcast on the update of COVID-19 at Government House Marina. Nosa Usla reports. Governor Sonwolu described as unacceptable the poor compliance level with the COVID-19 protocols including physical and social distancing, wearing of face masks, not exceeding 60% carriage capacity in public transportation, especially by the yellow commercial buses, all of which were meant to check the spread of the coronavirus in the state. The governor also directed the police to immediately begin confiscation of commercial motorcycles for failure to vacate the roads this period as earlier directed. People need to take responsibility. People have to take responsibility. This face mask wearing is to protect yourself. You have to help us protect you and protect your loved ones. The governor also ordered security agencies to turn back vehicles violating the restriction imposed on interstate movements of persons. Governor Songwulu reiterated that while trucks carrying essential items and foodstuffs are allowed, those having with them more than seven persons would also be turned back. In Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. That's it from Lagos. We now take a commercial break. The news continues shortly. I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. 
I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss and we share your grief. February 2020, Nigeria. It is real. It is a nightmare. It is killing people all over the world. It is COVID-19. Compliance with the various states in Nigeria, the current measures will flatten the curves. Shutting down is not an act of wickedness, but an act to save lives. Stay home, stay safe. Observe social distance. Always put on a face mask while leaving your house. Make sure you are on a tricycle alone. Cars and buses cannot carry more than half their passengers. Always remember to wash your hands. Together, we will defeat COVID-19. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, Nigeria Film Corporation, powering possibilities. Welcome there. Have you washed your hands? I'm inside my house again. This is not the key black man. Ah! I don't know if it's misinformation or poor hygiene that will kill you first. Coronavirus is real and good hygiene practice will save your life. Oh. Anyway, no hand washing, no eating. I will not take care of it. That's what I mean. is real and it's on the rise but you can help yourself and help others to be safe remember we can stop the spread it's in your hands this message is from the Akin Fadei Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Foundation Thanks for staying with NTA Nationwide. 
The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has taken its COVID-19 response outreach to persons living with disabilities in the Federal Capital Territory. Ruth Aguele was at Aguele was at Karmajiji where persons with special needs received food and other items. In anticipation, the people of Karimajiji community awaits the arrival of palliatives to their end. Finally, the wait is over. Food items and wrappers have been offloaded for distribution to persons living with disabilities. By the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development as part of its COVID-19 response outreach. Aisha Inu is one of the beneficiaries. For her, this palliatives will go a long way to reduce the hardship she faces with her two children. About 460 households of about 1,000 people are to benefit. And we expect that they uh, bear with us uh, and use what we have given to them uh, judiciously and also look forward to uh, how we are going to really support them more and assist them more to have uh, a means of livelihood. So we are coming to eat, alhamdulillah, is a good this is a very good thing and we are proud of what federal government is doing through the ministry. This is not the first time the ministry will be visiting this community to distribute palliatives as persons living with disabilities are given priority in the ongoing distributions across the country. In Abuja, Brith Aguale, NTA News. And in Ekiti State, the government has tightened security at its boundaries with other states to, while making effort to procure testing equipment to enhance the fight against the virus. The State Commissioner for Health and Human Services, Dr. Mojishola Yayakoladi, gave the indication at the State COVID-19 Task Force press briefing in Ado Ekiti. Ayodeji Ogunshakin reports. Among the non-pharmaceutical interventions to curb the community transmission of COVID-19 in the state is the interstate boundary closure. The rate at which some people are still finding their ways to the state however become worrisome, which the task force decried with the belief that for the fight against the pandemic to be won, people must adhere strictly to the various measures set by government. <laughs> The health commissioner said government is making efforts to procure more testing equipment and explained that those tested positive to the virus in the state are responding to treatment while efforts are on to prevent further spread. Meanwhile, more people have benefited from the food palliative to cushion the hardship caused by the lockdown in the state. At a palliative presentation by the special advisors to the state governor on federal matters, about 5,000 people benefited from the donation. Pandemic of the virus that is actually killing people, and it is our responsibility to be able to educate the people on the need to wash their hands, wear face masks, and also observe uh, social distance. The people were equally sensitized on the need to follow the various precautionary means to fight the virus. From Adekiti, Ayodi Jogushaki. News. Now, to help navigate Nigeria through the impact of, the, of COVID-19 on the economy, the Budget and Planning Office under the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning has held a virtual meeting with all state commissioners for budget and planning. The meeting is geared towards having a common approach in tackling the impact of COVID-19. Chimobi Walter Naji now reports. With an estimated 190 countries baffling the current global health pandemic, experts say another global recession is imminent given the shutdown of businesses around the world. Nigeria is also crossing its T's and dotting its I's, having inaugurated a technical economic group for Agenda 2050 in its quest to revive the nation's economy. This time, it is bringing all stakeholders on board from the sub-nationals to the national governments to
to forge a common front in reviving the economy and reviewing the medium-term National Development Plan 2021 to 2025, using the community, local government, private sector and civil society as its major drivers. The virtual meeting, anchored by the Minister for State, Finance, Budget yes, and National Planning, Clem Agba, is a think tank avenue for participants to around. come up with a workable national plan. Again, Mr. President approved that a thousand uh, persons be employed in each local government uh, area, uh, which translates to 774,000 uh, uh, jobs under the public works uh, uh, program. These uh, programs are going to cover uh, works, uh, environment, uh, housing, uh, water resources, you know, depending on what the different states or regions may, uh, may require. For the medium-term National Development Plan to achieve its desired objective, the meeting agreed that there is need for a consolidated national budget to give proper perspective to government's revenues and expenditures. In Abuja, I'm Chimubi Walter Naji, NT News. May degree is next and Mohammed is our guide. It's good to see you, Mohammed. To, glad to have you join us in May degree and we'll begin with some cheering news. The United States has recorded a major stride against the coronavirus pandemic when the University of Medigree Teaching Hospital discharged six out of the 24 patients in its isolation center. Four of the treated and discharged are medical personnel. Paul Kujovana reports. The University of Medigree Teaching Hospital is where the industry of coronavirus pandemic was recorded, leading to infestation of large number of contact persons, including health workers, who were confirmed positive and isolated for medical attention. It is good news for the people of Germany to hear that six from the UMTH, in addition to the two from the State Government Affirmation Center, have been certified negative and free of COVID-19 to reunite with their families. I was confirmed positive. Honestly, it has not been easy. We have been going through a lot, but doctors have been so caring. Coming for the test is not something you should run away. Most of us here that we are admitted, we are asymptomatic. So it doesn't mean that if you are at home, you don't have the symptoms, you are not carrying the illness. But I'm advising still on social distancing. People should learn to stay away from, you know, northerners here, we are used to all this majaliza of a thing. Deputy Chairman, Medical Advisory Committee, Clinical of the Health Institution, Dr. Ibrahim Salisu said, making public the discharge was to display big business information and its perception about the virus, its management and confirming effort. We have had people who are positive and today they have tested negative on two consecutive occasions and they are fit and free to go home to be discharged. The University of Medigree Teaching Hospital reiterated commitment to improving treatment and safety, not only on COVID-19, but other elements. The sixth discharge from the University of Medigree Teaching Hospital Isolation Center, making eight the total number of discharge. This strike, no doubt, will give hope and then reduce the anxiety among the residents to believe that coronavirus is not a death sentence. In my degree, Paul Nkujevana, NTA News. In continuation of provision of COVID-19 lockdown palliative in Borno State, 34,000 households have so far received food items in Meduguri Metropolitan Council with the Igbo community and other non-Indians of the state benefiting. Yagu Subukar reports. This is the third week of lockdown in Borno since the confirmation of a case of COVID-19, an attempt by government aimed at curbing spread. Palliative Committee in the state has been working around the clock to ensure relief items procured by government to ease the effect of the lockdown on vulnerable members of the society are distributed. Chairman for the State COVID-19 Palliative Committee, Engineer Booker Tobo commended contributions of Northeast Development Commission and Angati Foundation for their support with substantial amount of items for onward distribution and called on others to emulate them. Engineer Booker Tauba emphasized that the distribution is not political, hence the need on what representatives in charge of the distribution to be just, fair, and ensure the targeted vulnerable beneficiaries are reached. 
the Igbo community who benefited from the palliative side. The gesture will no doubt ameliorate their sufferings and commended Professor Babagana Umara Zulum's foresight for identifying with them. It is expected that the distribution for MMC will be rounded up on Tuesday before the committee proceeds to Jerry local government and other parts of the state. In Medjugorje, Yagum Subakar, NTA News. That's all from Medjugorje. Nationwide continues with Najatu in Abuja. Thank you very much, Mohamed. Now, the Imo State Governor, Hope Uzadima, has pledged state government support to the management of the Federal Polytechnic Nekede towards the production of personal protective equipment to aid the fight against COVID-19. He made this known during the presentation of two hand-washing, drying and sanitizing devices produced by the institution. Bright Epochu reports. The device is a semi-automated pedal-operated hand-washing and sanitizing device and a fully automated solar-powered hand-washing, sanitizing and drying device produced by the Federal Polytechnic Nekede were presented to the Imo State Governor as part of their support to the fight against COVID-19. Governor Hobo Zodima, who lauded the initiative, promised to assist in the production of more of the devices to service the entire state. He also stressed the need for heads of tertiary institutions across the country to come up with such innovation that will support federal government's effort at eradicating coronavirus while also intensifying efforts in the fight against cultism in higher institutions. I want to challenge you as a school to go beyond the producing what you have done and the sanitizers to produce also things like uh, personal protection equipment, PPE. Even produce ventilators, produce monitors. There is nothing rocket about any of these uh, technologies. Director of Federal Polytechnic Nekede, Michael Arimanwa, commended the governor's proactive disposition to the fight against COVID-19, promising to continue to contribute their quota in the fight against the virus. We had earlier produced antiseptic liquid soap and uh, alcohol-based hand sanitizers in pursuit of the same objective of fighting against coronavirus pandemic. In Oweri, Bright, Ebuchu, NTA News. Similarly, Kano State it has made steady progress in its COVID-19 response in the last few weeks. This was acknowledged by the leader of the ministerial task team in the state, Dr. Nasiru Saini Warzu, during a media briefing in Kano. Abdullahi Mustafa has details. Since the confirmation of the first case of COVID-19 in Kano, the tax force committee constituted by the state government has been holding periodic media briefing to update the public. This involves presentation from various subcommittees and relevant stakeholders. We have received quite a number of uh, items from individuals and organizations, including that of the federal government, Your Excellency. While the state continues to record more cases, 32 patients have been discharged and many more awaiting their follow-up test results. Since the beginning of this outbreak, we have infection among health workers amounting to 47. More measures are, however, been in place to flatten the curve. Now all the three testing centers are operating. And the next issue that we have embarked on is to ensure adequate supply of some these and other efforts, the leader of the ministerial task team sent to Kano to support the COVID-19 response, acknowledged are making significant impact. The response is improving, quality of care will improve, and people's lives will be safe. Members of the tax force, however, expressed displeasure over non-compliance with the lockdown order in some parts of the state. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NT News. This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Stay tuned for more reports after this timeout. The number of the COVID-19 cases in Nigeria is increasing daily with many more tests ongoing. The battle of testing, isolating, treating and attending to the affected persons rests heavily on the shoulders of our health workers, constantly putting their lives on the line and at risk to contain this virus. Save and protect the lives of millions of Nigerians. To these health workers, we at the Nigerian Television Authority 
NTA, on behalf of millions of Nigerians, say a big thank you for all that you have done and are doing to the security agencies enforcing the lockdown and every other frontliner. We say thank you for putting your lives on the line to save ours. There is no amount of words that can quantify our gratitude. Thank you. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. As a strong immune system increases the chances of victims surviving COVID-19, a corruption-free society creates opportunities for citizens to thrive and prosper. Build your immunity. Stop corruption now. Report all acts of corruption to ICPC on this toll-free number 0800-2255-4272. This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. The following guidelines for eased lockdown as announced by the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 are effective from 4th May 2020 in Abuja, Lagos, and Ogun states. For public spaces, the following are mandatory. Improvised face masks, temperature checks, hand washing facilities and hand sanitizers, physical distance of at least two meters, no sporting activities and mass gathering. On travel, these are prohibited. Passenger flights, interstate travel, except essential services, movement of agro products and petroleum products, Note, there will be mandatory supervised isolation of returnees for at least 14 days. For markets and offices, neighborhood markets are to open three times a week from the hours of 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Banks and financial services are to open from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Government offices are open only to staff from grade level 14 to 17 between the hours of 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Corporate offices and private sector are open to business from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Schools, churches, mosques, clubs, bars and gardens remain closed till further notice. COVID-19 is real. Take responsibility and stay safe. Thanks for staying with NTA Nationwide. We'll now join Caleb in Joss for more reports. Thank you, Najatu. Welcome to Joss. Two new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed in Plateau State by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Nimkum Larugnam, announced this to newsmen, saying that the state now has a total of 17 confirmed cases of COVID-19, with one treated and discharged. Ashesi Gopep has details. Dr. Nimkum Larugnam explains that contact tracing has been strengthened to investigate the case further to curb the spread of the virus. So with all this, to, you know that the, the issue of restriction of movement becomes very important. We find out that most of our cases are imported to the state. Uh, that underscores the need for restrictions, straightening our borders, lockdowns, and all those things. Because you, you know, some people will say, why are we locking down? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? So look at the importance. If we don't lock down, and uh, I'm sure all these patients would have come in and uh, issues would have raised seriously. Secretary to the government of the state assures government commitment towards ensuring the safety of citizens. The interlocal government movement should be highly restricted. So that except it becomes very necessary that you have to go, even if you are, you're going across your own local government, please, we need to know so that you can be guided. He further advised the public not to panic, but to continue to imbibe good personal hygiene, social distancing, and to avoid crowded places, as well as stay at home. In Joss, Ashes Gopep, NCA News. 
Christians have been reminded to continue to pray without ceasing for God's intervention in the fight against COVID-19. This was a position of some Christian clerics at the various church services in Jules. Kim Gotts reports. Evangelical Church winning all headquarters, Victory Power Assembly, as well as Assemblies of God Mainland District Church, now hold Sunday worship services in small units in line with government's directives of maintaining social distancing. The clergy unanimously underscored the power of prayers to bring to an end the COVID-19 pandemic ravaging the world. Despite the present pandemic, God is in charge and those who believe in him shall survive this pandemic and shall outlive this pandemic. Because it's only prayer that can bring an end to this pandemic. They should cry unto their God. God has said in the book of Isaiah, I'm the God of the widows. I'm the husband of the widows. And if they cry to, to their God, which is God of widows, he will actually answer them. Christians, we must believe that this pandemic, God's allowed it for a purpose. We can't say it's, mom, it's something different. This is something that has come. And God wants us to go back to him. To me, that is key. To encourage every Christian, every believer, that this is the time for every child of God to be serious in his spiritual life. They further admonished worshippers to adhere to the necessary directives on measures of curbing the spread of COVID-19 by the government. Meanwhile, the phase four of the lockdown commences on Monday in Plateau State. In Joss, Kim Goats, NTA News. Ajatu, Joss is done. Thank you very much, Caleb. Following the increasing rate of COVID-19 infections in Jagawa, particularly Duse, the state capital, a series of measures have been taken by the state government to contain community spread and ease the hardship of residents through provision of palliatives. Correspondent Mohammed Musa Sikira reports. In total, Eight local government areas were locked down since the index case of COVID-19 was recorded in Chicago State. Of the eight, two local governments of Gumel and Kazore were reopened following the certification of zero coronavirus pandemic case in the areas. The order, however, remained in force in six local government areas of Miga, Goram, Aura, Auyo, Bunikudu and Duce, the state capital, in view of the growing number of new cases of COVID-19. To contain the community spread of the viral infection, government rolled out measures to complement the lockdown, which include ban on the roaming of Almajre on the streets by making adequate provisions for their feeding at their respective study centers in the affected local government areas. From the result above, it has become necessary to enforce stricter measures in the affected areas, particularly in Duse, that carries almost 60% of all the cases in the state. Lockdown will continue and sanctions will be imposed on anybody that breaks this order. Others include mandatory wearing of face masks and use of hand sanitizer by all residents in the affected communities as the state government embarked on free distribution of the items with a view to ensure total compliance with the safety measures. Apart from these, the state government has continued to distribute food items to the vulnerable group to ease the hardship brought on them by the lockdown order. These are in addition to the strict border and boundary surveillance to check the influx of violators of the movement restriction protocols. However, despite these safety and palliative measures put in place, residents still move about with little attention to social distancing, wearing of face masks, use of hand sanitizer, among others, as was advised by the health experts. This situation, therefore, requires the stakeholders to step up efforts in the area of public sensitization to let the residents see the need for observing these safety measures, which until now remains the most effective tools in combating the community transmission of coronavirus. From Duty Muhammad Musaskira, NTA News. Weeks after the announcement of measures to check COVID-19 spread in Edo State, our correspondent reports it's business as usual for most residents, a situation many say portends great danger, especially as the country battles community transmission. Good luck, Inani, reports. The coronavirus pandemic is still raging. There have been several measures put in place by the state and federal government to check the spread of the virus. 
a no state in line with the federal government order imposed a ban on boundary closure with measures in place. When the temperature is high and the person is coughing and there is fever and there is difficulty in breathing, we have a line, free line that will call. We have a blast nearby that will take the person to Europe for the test. Again, wearing of face masks, adherence to number of passengers in commercial vehicles, social distancing with a stay-at-home order, and the imposition of a dusk-to-dawn curfew from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. are being observed in Edo State. Are the people compliant with the safety rules in place? I'm from Okene. Going to where? Going to Aoji. So are you are you not aware of uh, interstate uh, restriction of movement? Yeah, yeah, you are aware. So why are you not going to Aoji? I don't know. Now food they make us the entire road. First day it was uh, we are in large number, but as the, as the days goes by, the number kept on dropping. All hands must be on deck. Let us work together to fight it and succeed. Self distancing is very important. If everybody is doing self distancing and people are staying at home, we won't have more cases. I use the opportunity to call other Edo people to join this quest of being your brother's keeper. Whatever you have, this is time to share with the man that does not have. Campaign ads are not left out in the efforts of the state government and other agencies within the state to control the spread of the dreaded virus. Back to Kano State, where as part of measures to further restore sanity in the prices of food items, the State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission has met with rice millers in the state with a view to bringing to a halt the incessant hike in the prices or in the price of the commodity. Johannes Suhasambaro reports that reports. <laughs> is one of the states with highest number of rice milling factories, ranging from large, medium and small scale industries. However, few months ago, the price of the commodities skyrocketed, making it extremely difficult for the vulnerable to afford one of the most staple foods among Nigerians. To change the narrative, the Kano State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission on Surveillance Mission to Rice Outlets in the state discovered that the hike is due to activities of middlemen. Operators of supermarkets and other stores will buy directly from the processors. This is to avoid holding. I appeal to the federal government to allow all party markets to operate so that we can get it. It's the major raw material we use. This they said will no doubt ease the hardship fees in accessing the party and will in turn increase output and make the commodity affordable. In Kanu, Johannes Ahasambaro, NTA News. Thank you, Johannes. The Kaduna state government is adopting stiffer measures to contain the spread of the coronavirus through interstate travel. Mohamed Umar Ajingi reports. Security personnel and government officials led by the governor all out to enforce the interstate travel ban with major entry points, Kaduna Abuja Highway and Kaduna Kano Axis as centers of operation. Only vehicles conveying food items are allowed passage after a total search. <laughs> The governor says the fight against coronavirus pandemic in the state is total and more stringent measures will be applied to win the battle. Virtually all the cases we've had in Kaduna have been from other states. So we have a duty to ensure that the sacrifice of Kaduna state people is not in vain and keep everyone out. So this is why I'm here and I will be here from time to time. And from today, from 6 p.m., we close our borders. No vehicle will be allowed to pass. Any vehicle that comes to this border with Kanu will have to spend the night because the road will be completely blocked. The enforcement team visited one of the mobile calls provided to sanction violators. In the same vein, the state deputy governor led another set of enforcement team to Hunkwe Axis, the boundary between Kaduna and Katsina State. Illegal interstate travel is widening the transmission of coronavirus in the state, as majority of positive cases are people who came in from highly infested states. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. On a sad note, President Muhammad Buhari has commiserated with the government and people of Lagos State over the demise of Justice Isiaka Ishola Ulua. The late 
Justice Olua, who died, late Justice Olua, who died at the age of 102, left a legacy of fairness, integrity, and forthrightness in administering justice, which reverberated long after retirement. President Buhari sends condolences to the family of the late jurist, the state high court, his friends, and professional colleagues affirming that his meritorious public service was most remarkable. The president believes that Justice Ulua's personal attributes of simplicity, discipline and incorruptible lifestyle left an indelible mark on the Lagos State Judiciary and urges the Lagos State Government to institutionalize the good works of the legal luminary. In a statement signed by presidential spokesman Femi Adishino, President Buhari prays that, the, that Almighty God will receive the soul of the centenarian and comfort his family. And that's all on Nationwide. A quick reminder that COVID-19 is real. Remember to follow federal government guidelines to stay safe. I'm Naja Atutichani. Thanks for watching.